One day, wandering around that hospital and hospital grounds, I disappeared from that era and from 2137, up in a still further future date, by what means, who arranged it, who provided the transportation, I don't know. It was obviously a form of time travel, 28th century. And this was in a time period of uh, 2749 to 2751 AD. While many people still believe that time travel is a far-fetched idea that belongs in science fiction movies, a man has claimed he spent two years time traveling to the year 2749 and gave some ominous predictions about what is coming for us. In 2025, martial law was set in in almost all these areas. There was a combination of, in historically speaking, of a nuclear war, World War III, though it was considered a rather brief World War III, but a lot of destruction, and then there was natural earth changes, which were more destructive than the war. Between all of those, there was a great loss of life, a loss of government, a loss of transportation, and of course, with that, you have starvation and other problems. And it went continually downhill. But is his story fake or fiction? Could humans really travel back in time? Who is this mysterious timeline slider that jumps in time? What happens to time-traveling paradoxes? Join us as we dig deep into the compelling tale of a time traveler and his warnings of the dire future of our planet. Our main character is Al Bielek, who was born in 1927 to a pretty average and ordinary family. The thing was, Bielek was no ordinary child. He recalls memories from before he could walk, something that is unheard of in normal children. Not only that, but when he was a baby, Bielek even was able to understand conversations around him. Growing up, Bielek was always a bit self-conscious. He seemed more advanced than other kids his age. His classmates even gave him the nickname Walking Encyclopedia because he was able to retain so much information. Needless to say, Bielek always felt a bit out of place. He never understood why he knew specific things or how he could retain so much information at once. It wasn't until he was 60 years old and watching a film that he began to remember something else entirely. In 1988, Bielek went to watch The Philadelphia Experiment, a science fiction film based on the World War II government experiment of the same name. Watching the science fiction movie, Bielek recalled feeling a weird sense of déjà vu, like he'd known all about this experiment already. In the film, the United States Navy attempted to create a device to render their ships invisible to enemy radar. All of the tests were done aboard a ship called the USS Eldridge. Unfortunately, something else happened during the tests. There was a strange green-tinged fog surround the device the day it was activated. It was October 28, 1943, and bystanders watched as the Navy flipped the switch. As Blue Flash happened, somehow the ship and every onboard also disappeared. Everything and everyone on the USS Eldridge had turned invisible. But in the movie, and as told by eyewitnesses, the ship did not stay invisible forever. It reappeared. However, the reappearance had dire consequences. While sailors only suffered from nausea, others were gravely injured. Others suffered and died from mysterious illnesses. In any case, Bielek could not help but feel like he had been a part of the entire scenario. That feeling was creeping Bielek out. He began to have what he could only describe as flashbacks, since the memories were so vivid. Even so, he was not sure if he was losing his mind or not. So, he decided to seek out help. Bielek began looking into New Age methods of memory retrieval, and started to speak with psychics and therapists about the flashbacks. After speaking with people, Bielek began piecing everything together, two years after he had first watched the Philadelphia experiment. Bielek came out with his first exposition, explaining his flashbacks and what he had come to learn from them. What he said, though, raised more than a few eyebrows. He said that his name was not Al Bielek, and that he was not born in 1927. Instead, his name was Edward Cameron, born in 1916. But saying that his name was Edward Cameron was not even the strangest part of his revelation. 
Bielik went on to say that the United States government placed him in the Bielik family to keep a highly classified mission a secret. Amazingly, Bielik, aka Cameron's story, gets even stranger, more eyebrow-raising, and just real enough that people began to believe him. As Bielik's exposition continued, he began to explain how the Philadelphia experiment was much more than a science fiction movie. He said that it had actually happened and the United States government was covering it up. According to Bielik, the results of the experiment were too dire to even imagine. People were skeptical for obvious reasons, but there was one question that had everyone scratching their heads. How did Al Bielik or Edward Cameron get to know so much about a top-secret government operation? Bielik's answer to the question was that he knew so much about the experiment and the cover-up because he was there as an eyewitness. To prove he was there, Bielik publicly announced various secrets revolving around the Philadelphia experiment, things only someone who was there would know. At the 1990 Mutual UFO Network Conference in Texas, Bielek began recounting his story to a live audience. Like any good story, he started at the beginning, when he and his brother were drafted into the U.S. Navy in 1939. In 1939, he and his brother, Duncan Cameron, were drafted into the United States Navy. By the time 1943 rolled around, both brothers were appointed to the USS Eldridge, a ship that was about to change their lives forever. If he got anything through to the audience, Bielik wanted them to understand the severity of the experiment. Bielik explained that the movie was not fiction and actually happened during the Second World War. Some of the top scientists of the time were involved, helping the United States build a device that could potentially shield ships from enemy radar. He went on to say that he was not just an eyewitness, but was aboard the ship when the device was activated. Same as the movie, Bielik explained that some sailors were instantaneously sick while others began screaming. He and his brother did not know what to do during the chaos. So, they decided to jump ship. However, instead of falling down into the water, both he and Duncan were suspended in time, stuck in midair. Then, everything went black. The two brothers then woke up in a strange place, covered in burns from the radiation set off from the device. As Bielik tells it, he had no idea where they were, only that it was a hospital of some kind. They later learned that they were no longer in 1943, but had traveled through time and were in 2137. Understandably, they were very confused and had no idea what was going on. The first sign that something was wrong was that the room had a wall-mounted color TV, very unusual for 1943. They were told by hospital staff that they had suffered severe radiation burns, not from a nuclear attack, but from the radiation found in deep space. Bielik claimed they were told that there were very few surviving cities around the world and no more national boundaries or government. Eventually, the pair asked to see maps of the world and were reportedly stunned by how much it had changed in the preceding two centuries. As Bielik explained, much of California was now underwater, stretching to the San Andreas fault line, and there was not much left of Los Angeles as a functioning city. Many major U.S. cities such as Chicago, New Orleans, and San Diego were gone, while rising sea levels had seen the Great Lakes become one giant body of water, and the Mississippi River widen, becoming 30 miles wide at its narrowest point. In Europe, he said most of England had gone, while the Scottish Highlands and some of Ireland remained. Much of Europe was underwater, even parts of Switzerland. Most dramatically, he claimed that when he asked a hospital technician, he was told that the world's population had plummeted to just 300 million. He said he learned that most of the world's governments had crumbled away by the year 2025. A nuclear World War III killed millions, but, he claimed, far more were wiped out by changes to the Earth. Six weeks later, everything went dark again. Bielik and his brother Duncan were traveling through time. This time, they went even further back, to the year 2749. Looking around the new hospital, Bielik really did not need anyone to tell him he was in the future. He could tell just by looking at the surgical equipment around him. It was unlike anything he'd seen before. 
After his injuries were treated with advanced surgical materials and vibrational and light treatment therapies, Bielek spent the next two years working as a tour guide in 30th century. Even so, no amount of time would help him wrap his mind around what he was witnessing in this new world. Because in the 28th century, society had drastically changed. Government, as he'd known it, was a thing of the distant past. The countries of the world had all gone, and instead, most people lived in a series of self-governing city-states. These city-states had no elected or appointed government. Instead, each city was run by an intelligent computer with synthetic intelligence, called the Synthetic Intelligence Computer System that worked telepathically. It was illegal for humans to leave certain zones, and the governing supercomputers had the ability to terminate offending individuals there and then. Bielek claimed he had spoken to the computer and asked it how such a system of governance came to be. He was told that the project had started a couple of centuries earlier around the year 2600. No militaries existed as technology had made conflict practically impossible and everything was now free. Interestingly, that was not even the biggest change for Bielek. What terrified him the most were the massive wars that whipped out a solid chunk of the global population, bringing it from 7.1 billion down to no more than 300 million. The wars that left the world in ruins were between Russia and China, and then another between the United States and Europe. Everything was turned around, and Bielek did not know how to handle it. Not only that, but the technology he'd experienced was behind his wildest dreams. Humans had finally mastered anti-gravity technology, creating floating cities around the world. According to Bielek, cities were suspended about two miles above the ground with the anti-gravity technology. And with city limits and borders being a thing of the past, these floating structures traveled the Earth, controlled by the central computer. However, people did reside on the ground level, beneath these cities, although they were considered lower-class citizens. After two years in the very far future, Bielek and his brother experienced another blackout, and time traveled once again. This time, they wound up in the past, in 1983. But they didn't wake up in a hospital this time. Rather, they were in a secure government facility with highly ranked officials. Bielek and his brother disclosed all of the information they learned about the future. But their strange adventure wasn't going to stop with the debrief. There, he claimed he met Dr. John von Neumann, the Hungarian-American mathematician. This is despite the fact Dr. von Neumann died in 1957, some quarter of a century earlier. He convinced the two brothers to return to their original time and stop the Philadelphia experiment from ever happening. After his time in the Navy, Bielek said he was recruited by military contractors who revealed that the U.S. military was secretly adapting alien technology and forwarding research on psychic operations. Soon afterwards, he was recruited to the Montauk Project, a conspiracy theory that alleges that the U.S. government conducted secret projects in Montauk, New York, including for psychological warfare and time travel. He even claimed he was able to travel to Mars on several occasions, as well as to a research station in the year 100,000 BC. But sadly, once he came forward with his wacky theories in the year 1990, Bielek said the U.S. government disowned him. Bielek, who now insisted his real name was Edward Cameron and that he had been living for more than 100 years, believed the government didn't try to silence him because his experiments in time travel locked him into the current timeline. Therefore, he does not believe that he is putting the world in danger by talking about the events that will happen in the future. However, for the same reason, this means that no matter what horrors Bialik has seen in the future, there is no way for people today to avoid them. Is Bialik's story fake or fiction? Now we have no certain answer. But we know that AI Bielek isn't the only supposed time traveler to warn of the Earth future. A mysterious social media user who claims to be a time traveler from the year 2858 has claimed to know how the world is going to end. The user, who posts under the username Darkness Time Travel, 
has gained more than 12,000 followers by posting outlandish claims about future events, with everything from wormholes to humans using Mars as a backup planet. But in their most recent video, the user revealed that war with an alien species would spark the end of the world, less than two decades away. The supposed warning claims that aliens have come to Earth in 2023 to take over the planet, but the war apparently won't start until 2024. In the video, the TikTok user claimed, the first war will begin in early 2024 and will end in 2038, with the Earth being destroyed. Captioning the clip, they added, Another species of alien saves us, but not the planet. In a more positive revelation, a time traveler from the year 2345 reveals that in the next 20 or 30 years, not only will we have discovered a way to cure cancer and other devastating illnesses, but we will also be able to inject these remedies into people with a simple vaccination. The epidemic we experienced may have sped up their progress in certain ways. We also make dying seem less inevitable and more like a decision. The current state of life extension research will allow us to not only live hundreds of years, if not longer, but also to keep our young bodies for as long as we choose. Many of you may still be alive during my lifetime, therefore, just think about it. You're still in your 20s, but you've lived a long, fruitful life and have accumulated a wealth of knowledge and experience. Plus, you can accomplish all the things that a single normal lifespan just wouldn't let. At initially, there is considerable resistance from those who are concerned about surviving beyond a normal lifespan. But then, perhaps the majority of them will change their minds and start enjoying endless youth. In addition, space travel became popular with the Artemis missions, which returned humans to the moon a few years from now. After the spaceport and lunar base were built, well, after then, everything went according to plan. Even people with less disposable income may afford to take vacations to other worlds like Mars and its moons Europa and Titan. But after all, does time travel truly exist? Time travel has been a fantasy for at least 125 years. H.G. Wells penned his groundbreaking novel The Time Machine in 1895, and it's something that physicists and philosophers have been writing serious papers about for almost a century. What really kick-started scientific investigations into time travel was the notion, dating to the closing years of the 19th century, that time could be envisioned as a dimension, just like space. We can move easily enough through space, so why not time? As Nick Effingham, a philosopher at the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom says, in space, you can go wherever you want, so maybe in time you can similarly go anywhere you want. From there, it's a short step to time machines. Wells was a novelist, not a physicist, but physics would soon catch up. In 1905, Albert Einstein published the first part of his relativity theory, known as special relativity. In it, space and time are malleable. Measurements of both space and time depend on the relative speed of the person doing the measuring. A few years later, the German mathematician Hermann Minkowski showed that, in Einstein's theory, space and time could be thought of as two aspects of a single four-dimensional entity known as space-time. Then, in 1915, Einstein came up with the second part of his theory known as general relativity. General relativity renders gravity in a new light. Instead of thinking of it as a force, general relativity describes gravity as a bending or warping of space-time. But special relativity is enough to get us started in terms of moving through time. According to Clifford Johnson, a physicist at the University of Southern California, the theory establishes that time is much more similar to space than we had previously thought. So maybe everything we can do with space, we can do with time. Well, almost everything. Special relativity doesn't give us a way of going back in time, but it does give us a way of going forward, and at a rate that you can actually control. In fact, thanks to special relativity, you can end up with two twins having different ages, the famous twin paradox. 
Suppose you head off to the Alpha Centauri star system in your spaceship at a really high speed, something close to the speed of light, while your twin remains on Earth. When you come back home, you'll find you're now much younger than your twin. It's counterintuitive, to say the least. But the physics, after more than a century, is rock solid. As Jan 11, a physicist at Barnard College in New York says, it is absolutely provable in special relativity that the astronaut who makes the journey, if they travel at very nearly the speed of light, will be much younger than their twin when they come back. Interestingly, time appears to pass just as it always does for both twins. It's only when they're reunited that the difference reveals itself. Maybe you were both in your 20s when the voyage began. When you come back, you look just a few years older than when you left, while your twin is perhaps now a grandparent. My experience of the passage of time is utterly normal for me. My clocks tick at the normal rate. I age normally. Movies run at the right pace, says Levin. I'm no further into my future than normal, but I've traveled into my twin's future. With general relativity, things really start to get interesting. In this theory, a massive object warps or distorts space and time. Perhaps you've seen diagrams or videos comparing this to the way a ball distorts a rubber sheet. One result is that just as traveling at a high speed affects the rate at which time passes, simply being near a really heavy object will affect one's experience of time. This is not a, just a conjecture or thought experiment. It's been measured. Using twin atomic clocks, one flown in a jet aircraft, the other stationary on Earth, Physicists have shown that a flying clock ticks slower because of its speed. In the case of the aircraft, the effect is minuscule. But if you were in a spaceship traveling at 90% of the speed of light, you'd experience time passing about 2.6 times slower than it was back on Earth. And the closer you get to the speed of light, the more extreme the time travel. The highest speeds achieved through any human technology are probably the protons whizzing around the Large Hadron Collider at 99.9999991% of the speed of light. Using special relativity, we can calculate one second for the proton is equivalent to 27,777,778 ,7 seconds, or about 11 months, for us. Amazingly, Particle physicists have to take this time dilation into account when they are dealing with particles that decay. In the lab, muon particles typically decay in 2.2 microseconds. But fast-moving muons, such as those created when cosmic rays strike the upper atmosphere, take 10 times longer to disintegrate. The next method of time travel is also inspired by Einstein. According to his theory of general relativity, the stronger the gravity you feel, the slower time moves. As you get closer to the center of the Earth, for example, the strength of gravity increases. Time runs slower for your feet than your head. Again, this effect has been measured. In 2010, physicists at the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology placed two atomic clocks on shelves, one 33 centimeters above the other, and measured the difference in their rate of ticking. The lower one ticked slower because it feels a slightly stronger gravity. To travel to the far future, all we need is a region of extremely strong gravity, such as a black hole. The closer you get to the event horizon, the slower time moves, but it's risky business. Cross the boundary, and you can never escape. And anyway, the effect is not that strong, so it's probably not worth the trip. Assuming you had the technology to travel the vast distances to reach a black hole, the nearest is about 3,000 light years away, the time dilation through traveling would be far greater than any time dilation through orbiting the black hole itself. The situation described in the movie Interstellar, where one hour on a planet near a black hole is the equivalent of seven years back on Earth, is so extreme as to be impossible in our universe, according to Kip Thorne, the movie's scientific advisor. The most mind-blowing thing, perhaps, is that GPS systems have to account for time dilation effects, due to both the speed of the satellites and gravity they feel, in order to work. Without these corrections, 
Your phone's GPS capability wouldn't be able to pinpoint your location on Earth to within even a few kilometers. Another way to time travel to the future may be to slow your perception of time by slowing down or stopping your bodily processes and then restarting them later. Bacterial spores can live for millions of years in a state of suspended animation until the right conditions of temperature, moisture, food kick-start their metabolisms again. Some mammals, such as bears and squirrels, can slow down their metabolism during hibernation, dramatically reducing their cells' requirement for food and oxygen. Could humans ever do the same? Though completely stopping your metabolism is probably far beyond our current technology, some scientists are working towards achieving inducing a short-term hibernation state lasting at least a few hours. This might be just enough time to get a person through a medical emergency, such as a cardiac arrest, before they can reach the hospital. In 2005, American scientists demonstrated a way to slow the metabolism of mice by exposing them to minute doses of hydrogen sulfide, which binds to the same cell receptors as oxygen. The core body temperature of the mice dropped to 13 degree and metabolism decreased tenfold. After six hours, the mice could be reanimated without ill effects. Unfortunately, similar experiments on sheep and pigs were not successful, suggesting the method might not work for larger animals. Another method, which induces a hypothermic hibernation by replacing the blood with a cold saline solution, has worked on pigs and is currently undergoing human clinical trials in Pittsburgh. Moreover, general relativity also allows for the possibility for shortcuts through space-time, known as wormholes, which might be able to bridge distances of a billion light-years or more, or different points in time. Many physicists, including Stephen Hawking, believe wormholes are constantly popping in and out of existence at the quantum scale, far smaller than atoms. The trick would be to capture one and inflate it to human scales, a feat that would require a huge amount of energy, but which might just be possible in theory. In addition, note that there's also the troubling question of what happens to our notions of cause and effect if backward time travel were possible. The most famous of these conundrums is the so-called grandfather paradox. Suppose you travel back in time to when your grandfather was a young man. You kill him, perhaps by accident, which means your parent won't be born, which means you won't be born. Therefore, you won't be able to travel through time and kill your grandfather. Over the years, physicists and philosophers have pondered various resolutions to the grandfather paradox. One possibility is that the paradox simply proves that no such journeys are possible. The laws of physics, somehow, must prevent backward time travel. This was the view of the late physicist Stephen Hawking, who called this rule the chronology protection conjecture. But there are also other, more intriguing solutions. Maybe backward time travel is possible, and yet time travelers can't change the past, no matter how hard they try. Effingham, whose book Time Travel, Probability and Impossibility was published earlier this year, puts it this way. You might shoot the wrong person, or you might change your mind, or you might shoot the person you think is your grandfather, but it turns out your grandmother had an affair with the milkman, and that's who your grandfather was all along. You just didn't know it. Which also means the much-discussed fantasy of killing Hitler before the outbreak of World War II is a non-starter. In the words of Fabio Costa, a theoretical physicist at the University of Queensland in Australia, it's impossible because it didn't happen. It's not even a question. We know how history developed. There is no redo. In fact, suggests Effingham, if you can't change the past, then a time traveler probably can't do anything. Your mere existence at a time in which you never existed would be a contradiction. The universe doesn't care whether the thing you've changed is that you've killed Hitler or that you moved an atom from position A to position B, Effingham says. But all is not lost. The scenarios Effingham and Costa are imagining involve a single universe with a single timeline. 
but some physicists speculate that our universe is just one among many. If that's the case, then perhaps time travelers who visit the past can do as they please, which would shed new light on the grandfather paradox. Maybe, for whatever reason, you decide to go back and commit this crime of killing your grandfather. And so, the world branches off into two different realities, says Levin. As a result, even though you seem to be altering your past, you're not really altering it. You're creating a new history. This idea of multiple timelines lies at the heart of the Back to the Future movie trilogy. In contrast, in the movie 12 Monkeys, Bruce Willis's character makes multiple journeys through time, but everything plays out along a single timeline. What everyone seems to agree on is that no one is building a time-traveling DeLorean or engineering a custom-built wormhole anytime soon. Instead, physicists are focusing on completing the work that Einstein began a century ago. After more than 100 years, no one has figured out how to reconcile general relativity with the other great pillar of 20th century physics, quantum mechanics. Some physicists believe that a long-sought unified theory known as quantum gravity will yield new insight into the nature of time. At the very least, says Levin, it seems likely that we need to go beyond just general relativity to understand time. Meanwhile, it's no surprise that, like H.G. Wells, we continue to daydream about having the freedom to move through time just as we move through space. Ultimately, daydreaming about time travel allows people to temporarily escape the constraints of the present and indulge in speculation about what might lie beyond the boundaries of time as we know it. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Is time travel possible? Short answer, yes. And you're doing it right now, hurtling into the future at the impressive rate of one second per second. You're pretty much always moving through time at the same speed, whether you're watching paint dry or wishing you had more hours to visit with a friend from out of town. But this isn't the kind of time travel that's captivated countless science fiction writers or spurred a genre so extensive that Wikipedia lists over 400 titles in the category Movies About Time Travel. In franchises like Doctor Who, Star Trek, and Back to the Future, characters climb into some wild vehicle to blast into the past or spin into the future. Once the characters have traveled through time, they grapple with what happens if you change the past or present based on information from the future, which is where time travel stories intersect with the idea of parallel universes or alternate timelines. And while the idea of time travel remains controversial, a few individuals unveiled to have experienced it firsthand. For instance, two reporters allegedly witnessed a significant news event before it actually occurred. A photographer and his partner leap forward in time and take some photos of the future. Are these time travel stories real or fake? Could time travel truly exist? Join us as we reveal the truth about time machines. The dream of traveling through time is both ancient and universal. The concept of time travel, moving through time the way we move through three-dimensional space, has been confined to the realm of the human imagination for centuries and more recently has made its mark in the landscape of science fiction books and films. However, our innate fascination with time travel also lies in several first-hand accounts. Among these accounts is the bewildering story of Thomas Johnson, who vanished from his own timeline only to reappear 60 years later in the future, and Mike Markham, an ambitious inventor who sought to conquer time itself. Mike Madman Markham attempted to construct a time machine on his front porch in Stanbury, Missouri, in early 1995. Age 21, as a student in electrical engineering, he started experimenting with a contraption called the Jacob's Ladder. 
The simple device sees an electric spark jumping back and forth between two parallel wires and appearing to climb up the ladder. As he was messing around with the device, Mike claimed he spotted something unusual. He said he spotted a circular vortex, so he decided to test the effect by throwing in a metal screw to see what would happen. He figured if he was going to rebuild the machine, he should use larger transformers to generate higher voltages. What he needed cost $20,000 each, so he decided to break into a local power station and steal six old transformers to continue his work. Once he connected the transformers to his Jacob's Ladder, he sparked a mass blackout on the streets in his neighborhood, shutting down the electrical grid for several hours. Cops soon turned up at his house with a warrant to search his property and arrested him for pinching the transformers. According to reports, Mike told the judge during his trial he was trying to find out winning lottery numbers in order to fund a research lab. Mike was released from prison several months later and shot to fame on local radio, telling stories about the disappearing screw and his plans to build a time machine. It was on Art Bell's radio show, which often focused on paranormal topics, that Art branded Mike a madman and he adopted the name. The radio station's website even documents the bizarre story of Madman Mike. While on air, Mike explained to Art and his listeners how he didn't have any cash or spare parts to continue with his experiments. He shared his phone number live on air and allegedly received non-stop calls for the next three days. With his listeners' donations, his next time machine project was bigger and more powerful than the previous one. And he wanted to test the machine on himself by creating an electromagnetic vortex big enough for a human to walk into. He appeared on the radio station a year later, and when asked what he would take with him into the time machine, he said he would only take his phone. During his appearance on the show in 1996, he said he was 30 days away from finishing off his legal time machine. But he suddenly disappeared in 1997 and was never heard from again, leaving him at the center of one of the biggest time travel mysteries. Shortly after he vanished, a listener on the radio show called in to talk about a bizarre story he had found. The listener said in the 1930s, cops found a dead man on a beach in California. Notably, the man was crushed to death in a strange metal tube, and a mysterious device was found near his body which looked very much like a mobile phone. In many sources, this is where Mike's story concludes. But in 2015, Mike appeared to resurface online and rubbished wild claims he had traveled to the 1930s and died. And according to reports, his local radio station interviewed him for a third time in 2015. Under the username Relmedman Markham, Mike appeared to post on a blog about paranormal activities in February. The user has been a member of the site since 2015. He wrote, Rumors are ablazing that I am dead, not well and had time traveled to 1930 something where I died on a beach in a tube. Whoever posted those pictures of a redhead, that is also not me. It was some school kid with my name that someone long ago attributed to me. Whatever was found in the 1930s was not me, and I've read that was debunked but can't find the article. When someone asked whether he had any new time machine plans in motion, Mike replied, Yes, but it is stalled at the moment until I get canned some inverters. I have some 24-volt panels in my bus for a project. They got a little ratty from sitting outside for a bit. His followers have asked the blog user to prove he's the real Mike Madman, but so far he's offered no evidence of his true identity. It remains a mystery as to whether Mike simply changed his name and decided to live a quiet life away from the public eye, or whether his time machine project was truly a success. Only Madman Mike knows the truth. Nevertheless, the void left by his absence since then has only served to amplify the legend of his time machine, leaving many to debate about the thin line between genius and madness. Markham's quest for time travel remains a captivating chapter in the history of time travel lore and informs our reflections about the subject to this day. Notably, besides the intrigue surrounding journey beyond the bounds of time, Mike Markham's time travel, we also have a bewildering story of Thomas Johnson, 
who vanished from his own timeline only to reappear 60 years later in the future. In July of 1912, on a tranquil farm in New York City, the lives of Thomas Johnson and his family were shattered by an event that defied explanation. The Johnsons led a simple life made by hard work. Meanwhile, a young Thomas, aged around 10, found himself irresistibly drawn to the lake on their farm. Despite his father's stern warnings, rooted in tales of animals vanishing near the water body, Thomas's fascination would soon be his undoing. One fateful day, Thomas ventured far closer to the lake than ever before. As he approached the forbidden waters, his friends watched in awe as a whirlpool surfaced from the once still lake to swallow Thomas whole and disappear back into stillness, leaving no trace of the ten-year-old farm boy behind. Thus began the exhaustive search for Thomas. Weeks of searching became months, which became years, with each passing day deepening the scar left upon his family by his loss. Thomas's father was often seen standing at the lake, silently witnessing the place that took his son from him. Sixty years passed of being burdened by the guilt and grief of losing Thomas. It was then that the lake decided to reveal its secret. In July of 1970, a whirlpool akin to the one that had taken Thomas 60 years earlier was seen forming on the lake's surface. However, this time, it returned Thomas, practically unaged, to his now 91-year-old father and to a world that had moved on without him. This extraordinary incident raises deep questions about the true nature of time and reality. Thomas returned to his family 60 years after mysteriously disappearing as a 15-year-old. The authorities, upon confirming Thomas's identity, were left scratching their heads at this mystery that seemed to challenge the laws of nature as we know them. This case then attracted so much attention that both Thomas and his father decided to move and change their identity. The child never wanted to reveal what he saw or lived in that period of time. Could it have been Thomas Johnson, a victim of an extraterrestrial abduction? Or had Thomas traveled through an invisible time portal to a place where time passed more slowly than on Earth? We don't know. Regardless, one thing is for sure. Thomas and Markham's quests for time travel continue to inspire curiosity and debate about the possibilities of time travel and the limits of human ingenuity. Imagine that you possess the power to traverse the corridors of time, to step back into the historic past or forward into any possible future. Where will you go? Or more precisely, when will you go? That is, when, in ancient history or the potential future, will you travel to? Obviously, many people are fascinated by the idea of changing the past or seeing the future before it's due. But when questions of science and philosophy inevitably come up in the exploration of time travel, it has tended to also open up questions on the nature of reality. Scientifically speaking, the concept of time travel is linked with the theory of relativity, which tells us that the physical realities of space-time can be warped under certain conditions, theoretically allowing for travel across different times. However, the concept remains only theoretical to this day, due to the vast amount of energy required and the several paradoxes which open up as a consequence. Regardless, one thing can't deny, science does support some amount of time-bending. Physicist Albert Einstein developed his theory of special relativity in 1905. Along with his later expansion, the theory of general relativity, it has become one of the foundational tenets of modern physics. Special relativity describes the relationship between space and time for objects moving at constant speeds in a straight line. The short version of the theory is deceptively simple. First, all things are measured in relation to something else. That is to say, there is no absolute frame of reference. Second, the speed of light is constant. It stays the same no matter what and no matter where it's measured from. And third, nothing can go faster than the speed of light. From those simple tenets unfolds actual, real-life time travel. 
An observer traveling at high velocity will experience time at a slower rate than an observer who isn't speeding through space. While we don't accelerate humans to near light speed, we do send them swinging around the planet at 28,160 kilometers per hour aboard the International Space Station. Astronaut Scott Kelly was born after his twin brother and fellow astronaut, Mark Kelly. Scott Kelly spent 520 days in orbit, while Mark logged 54 days in space. The difference in the speed at which they experience time over the course of their lifetimes has actually widened the age gap between the two men. As Mark Kelly said in a panel discussion on July 12, 2020, so, whereas I used to be just six minutes older, now I am six minutes and five milliseconds older. Now I've got that over his head. The difference that low Earth orbit makes in an astronaut's lifespan may be negligible, better suited for jokes among siblings than actual life extension or visiting the distant future, but the dilation in time between people on Earth and GPS satellites flying through space does make a difference. The Global Positioning System, or GPS, helps us know exactly where we are by communicating with a network of a few dozen satellites positioned in a high Earth orbit. The satellites circle the planet from 20,100 kilometers away, moving at 14,000 kilometers per hour. According to special relativity, the faster an object moves relative to another object, the slower that first object experiences time. For GPS satellites with atomic clocks, this effect cuts 7 microseconds, or 7 millionths of a second, off each day, according to the American Physical Society publication Physics Central. Then, according to general relativity, clocks closer to the center of a large gravitational mass, like Earth, tick more slowly than those farther away. So, because the GPS satellites are much farther from the center of Earth compared to clocks on the surface, Physics Central added, that adds another 45 microseconds onto the GPS satellite clocks each day. Combined with the negative 7 microseconds from the special relativity calculation, the net result is an added 38 microseconds. This means that in order to maintain the accuracy needed to pinpoint your car or phone, or since the system is run by the U.S. Department of Defense, a military drone, engineers must account for an extra 38 microseconds in each satellite's day. The atomic clocks on board don't tick over to the next day until they have run 38 microseconds longer than comparable clocks on Earth. Given those numbers, it would take more than seven years for the atomic clock in a GPS satellite to unsync itself from an Earth clock by more than a blink of an eye. We did the math. If you estimate a blink to last at least 100,000 microseconds, as the Harvard database of useful biological numbers does, it would take thousands of days for those 38 microsecond shifts to add up. This kind of time travel may seem as negligible as the Kelly brothers' age gap, but given the hyper-accuracy of modern GPS technology, it actually does matter. If it can communicate with the satellites whizzing overhead, your phone can nail down your location in space and time with incredible accuracy. According to NASA, general relativity might also provide scenarios that could allow travelers to go back in time. But the physical reality of those time travel methods is no piece of cake. Wormholes are theoretical tunnels through the fabric of space-time that could connect different moments or locations in reality to others. Also known as Einstein-Rosen bridges, or white holes, as opposed to black holes, speculation about wormholes abounds. But despite taking up a lot of space or space-time in science fiction, no wormholes of any kind have been identified in real life. Primordial wormholes are predicted to be just 10 to the power of negative 33 centimeters at the tunnel's mouth. Previously, they were expected to be too unstable for anything to be able to travel through them. However, a study claims that this is not the case. The theory, which suggests that wormholes could work as viable space-time shortcuts, was described by physicist Pascal Coirin. As part of the study, Coirin used the Eddington-Finkelstein metric, as opposed to the Schwarzschild metric, which has been used in the majority of previous analyses. In the past, 
the path of a particle could not be traced through a hypothetical wormhole. However, using the Eddington-Finkelstein metric, the physicist was able to achieve just that. Coiron's paper was described in October 2021 in the preprint database ARCHIF before being published in the Journal of Modern Physics D. Coiron found that by using the Eddington-Finkelstein metric, he could more easily trace the path of a particle through a hypothetical wormhole. He found that the particle can cross the event horizon, enter the wormhole tunnel, and escape through the other side, all in a finite amount of time. The Eddington-Finkelstein metric didn't misbehave at any point in that trajectory. Does this mean that Einstein-Rosen bridges are stable? Not quite. General relativity only tells us about the behavior of gravity and not the other forces of nature. Thermodynamics, which is the theory of how heat and energy act, for example, tells us that white holes are unstable. And if physicists try to manufacture a black hole-white hole combination in the real universe using real materials, other math suggests the energy densities would break everything apart. However, Coiron's result is still interesting because it points out that wormholes aren't quite as catastrophic as they first appeared, and that there may be stable paths through wormhole tunnels, perfectly allowed by general relativity, if only they could get us to grandma's faster. While Einstein's theories appear to make time travel difficult, some researchers have proposed other solutions that could allow jumps back and forth in time. These alternate theories share one major flaw. As far as scientists can tell, there's no way a person could survive the kind of gravitational pulling and pushing that each solution requires. Astronomer Frank Tipler proposed a mechanism, sometimes known as a Tipler cylinder, where one could take matter that is ten times the sun's mass, then roll it into a very long but very dense cylinder. The Anderson Institute, a time travel research organization, described the cylinder as a black hole that has passed through a spaghetti factory. According to the Anderson Institute, after spinning this black hole spaghetti a few billion revolutions per minute, a spaceship nearby, following a very precise spiral around the cylinder, could travel backward in time on a closed, time-like curve. The major problem is that in order for the Tipler cylinder to become reality, the cylinder would need to be infinitely long or be made of some unknown kind of matter. At least for the foreseeable future, endless interstellar pasta is beyond our reach. Theoretical physicist Amos Ori at the Technion Israel Institute of Technology in Haifa, Israel, proposed a model for a time machine made out of curved space-time, a donut-shaped vacuum surrounded by a sphere of normal matter. In the words of Ori, the machine is space-time itself. If we were to create an area with a warp like this in space that would enable timelines to close on themselves, it might enable future generations to return to visit our time. However, note that there are a few caveats to Ori's time machine. First, visitors to the past wouldn't be able to travel to times earlier than the invention and construction of the time donut. Second, and more importantly, the invention and construction of this machine would depend on our ability to manipulate gravitational fields at will, a feat that may be theoretically possible but is certainly beyond our immediate reach. In addition, as you know, time travel has long occupied a significant place in fiction. Since as early as the Mahabharata, an ancient Sanskrit epic poem compiled around 400 BC, humans have dreamed of warping time. Lisa Yazek, a professor of science fiction studies at the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, told Live Science, Every work of time travel fiction creates its own version of space-time, glossing over one or more scientific hurdles and paradoxes to achieve its plot requirements. Whether you prefer phone booths, cars, or wearable devices, surely there is a time machine out there for you. We've gathered some of the top time machines from science fiction in all their wibbly, wobbly, timey-wimey glory. TARDIS, Doctor Who Perhaps the most famous of time machines, the TARDIS, time and relative dimension in space, 
which is disguised as a police phone booth, allows Doctor Who and his companions to jump across eras on planet Earth. In the new series, they've met many historical figures using this machine, such as the artist Vincent van Gogh and writers Agatha Christie and Charles Dickens. Doctor Who often uses the TARDIS to try to change events in time with varying success. DeLorean Back to the Future In the Back to the Future trilogy, the DeLorean can travel to a time you punch into the car's dashboard as long as the vehicle reaches 88 miles per hour and has sufficient power. This leads to several complications for the characters, however, when they run out of the plutonium that is usually used to power the vehicle. Much of the first movie revolves around finding an alternative source of power. Klingon Bird of Prey. Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. While the characters in Star Trek the original series are no stranger to time travel, it is in the film Star Trek IV The Voyage Home that they do one of their most famous maneuvers with a captured Klingon bird of prey, a slingshot around the sun to nab humpback whales from the 20th century. The Enterprise crew pioneered the Manuweaver with the U.S. Enterprise, which we also think is an awesome time machine, in the classic first season episode Tomorrow is Yesterday. The crew's escapades in 1980s San Francisco include Captain James T. Kirk, William Shatner, mastering the use of colorful metaphor, swearing, and explaining the behavior of Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy, by saying Spock used too much LDS a few years ago. Complicated Contraption, The Time Machine. Based on the 1895 H.G. Wells novel, this 2002 movie shows Alexander Hartdegen, Guy Pierce, sitting in a complicated device of wheels, levers, and light to travel 800,000 years into the future. He planned to test this device to save somebody he loved, but his first flight plunges him into a war he is not prepared to fight. Phone Booth, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. In perhaps the best method ever to get a school assignment done, slackers Bill Preston, Alex Winter, and Ted Logan, Keanu Reeves, use a phone booth to travel back in time and get some first-hand knowledge of historical figures. But things take an unexpected turn when an explosion knocks Napoleon Bonaparte into their wake, dragging the French leader from Austria in 1805 to Southern California in 1988. Ten space movies to watch in 2015. Time Displacement Equipment, the Terminator movie series. Demonstrating how a war can be fought in four dimensions, yes, including time, the Time Displacement Equipment is a central part of the Terminator film series. At various moments, different factions in the war between humans and Machinas use the equipment to send their agents backward or forward in time. The device looks like a big gyroscope, and travelers must be specially coded before entering for it to work properly. Rocket Sled Time Cop While time travel movies introduce all sorts of paradoxes, the Rocket Sled in Time Cop, 1994, has an unusual one. The device appears to vanish every time users climb into it and careen toward a wall. But when riders goes back to where they came from, they magically appear in the sled again. This phenomenon has spawned much speculation on the internet. Time Turner, Harry Potter, the prisoner of Azkaban. This innocent looking pendant is used by Hermione Granger, Emma Watson, to gain more time for her studies. After special approval from a professor at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, she uses the device to regularly jump back a few hours in time to take extra classes. Hermione keeps the device secret from her friends Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe, and Ron Weasley, Rupert Grint, until it comes in handy for a rescue mission. The Island Lost Lost is one of those television shows in which nobody really knows what's going on. But a few seasons in, it becomes clear that the island on which the travelers are stranded has time travel properties, which are sometimes activated via a frozen wheel. But their attempts to change the past usually succeed only in bringing about the same events via other means. Time Jump Device Men in Black 3 
While time travel is illegal in the Men in Black universe, there are concerns that criminals could use the technology to their advantage. It ends up playing a key role in the plot of Men in Black 3, 2012, which includes extensive references to the Apollo 11 launch of July 16, 1969. The handheld device can be activated by falling with it to the ground from a height. Wayback Machine, The Rocky and Bullwinkle Show. This time machine was actually invented by a dog, the super genius Mr. Peabody, for his pet human boy, Sherman. The duo travel in the time machine together to see important events in history, such as the famous Charge of the Light Brigade during the Crimean War in 1854. The Wayback Machine website on the internet is an homage to Wabak, which, in turn, was inspired by the popular Univasi computers of the 1960s. Unnamed Device, Primer. The time machine in the 2004 movie Primer was originally used by the characters to try to make money in the stock market. However, another person discovers the time machine and gets ill from the effects of it, casting doubt on its utility. Cosmic Treadmill, The Flash. In perhaps the ultimate inspiration to exercise, this treadmill will take you back in time, but only if you go at superhuman speed. In one famous comic book, Barry Allen uses the device to go to the 25th century to encounter Professor Zoom, a noted villain in the DC Universe. After all, it's no surprise that we continue to daydream about having the freedom to move through time just as we move through space. As Clifford Johnson, a physicist at the University of Southern California says, time is embedded in everything we do. It looms large in how we perceive the world. So being able to mess with time, I'm not surprised we're obsessed with that and fantasize about it. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.